Hello everyone and welcome to our series on using different technology tools for mobile devices, cell phones, Chromebooks, tablets in your classroom. On uh, this particular episode we're going to focus on a tool that's been around for a while so you might have already heard about it but I think it's something that still needs to be uh, dealt with specifically is Quizlet. Okay, Quizlet is a wonderful tool that really started initially of focusing mostly on creating online flashcards for quick study. All right, so taking that usually mundane task of creating flashcards on old 3x5 index cards and now bringing it into more of a digital atmosphere, which creates ease of use and can be used easily on a cell phone, obviously, and in other places. Uh, but it's come a long way in its development, and I've been using it for years, and I really am impressed with how they keep on making this a relevant tool uh, today. Uh, so like everything you've been focusing on in this particular series, you can use Quizlet right from a browser like I am right now. Uh, you can be used on a laptop, you can be used on a Chromebook, certainly. Uh, there's great apps for both iOS and for Android that you can also access very easily. So it really is a very versatile tool that can be used cross-platform and on many different devices. So here is your sign-in page and the usual sort of let's get started and all that good stuff, uh, which is really kind of, kind of neat. Uh, sign up. Here you go. You can sign up very easily, which I love. Now there is a sign up with Google. So if you are using any kind of a Google app for education, or why I just keep it simply tied to your Google account, you can do that. Or if you want to kind of create a more traditional login with a username or email, you can also do that as well. So that's really nice. There's also a, a Facebook sign up too. All right. Wonderful. Okay. So here it is. And like a lot of the tools we've been focusing on, this one is free, but there always is the premium upgrade. Okay. Uh, so here, you can kind of see about it, and I wanted you to kind of look at some of the pricing differentials between uh, what they have here in terms of um, how much everything costs. Okay, so we go to like teachers down here at the bottom of the page. Uh, it gives you kind of a neat sort of uh, sort of page about how it's used in education. Uh, sign up for free, obviously. You can create your own study materials very easily, and you can become a power teacher. So upgrade to Quizlet teacher. <clears throat> okay, so. If we do that, you kind of get a sense of how much it is. Uh, it's either $34.99 a year or it is $2.92 a month. Uh, $2.92 a month doesn't sound too bad. That's pretty much the price of a Vente uh, Dark Roast at Starbucks. So I guess maybe we, you, we could afford that. Uh, but what does it actually give you? Um, you can track your progress of your students. So basically, you can you buy the premium features. You can actually create classes and uh, students log in and you can track what they're doing. All right. Um, there are also some more features of adding your own voice. <clears throat> all right. To your content sets, which I think is a kind of a nice thing that I think is really cool and, and worth it. And there's this new diagramming create creator where you can create diagrams on, on images, which is really kind of kind of nice. OK. Um, and then you get rid of the ads. Okay, you can organize your classes. You track student progress. I ha I've had some mixed experiences with it. Uh, basically, what it does is when students go through a vocabulary set, it just kind of keeps track of, you know, they look at, at each card and they interact with the vocabulary set. And I had experience once with one of my best students. And I was in the library, and from a distance, I saw him going through one of my Quizlet vocabulary sets, and he was just clicking as fast as he could to go through the deck. So it appeared that he actually went through the deck completely. That was a little bit disconcerting. Now, at the time, it didn't tell you how much time was spent on the deck, and I don't know if that's been changed. I think if that feature's been added, we have to look a little more closely into that to actually gauge how long a student interacts with the cart. I think that might be useful. But that kind of turned me off to the tracking student progress because it can easily be manipulated. But like anything, right, uh, I think we have to take account of that. If it's, if it's a homework assignment, you know, students always find ways to, you know, <laughs> sometimes shortcut those expectations. All right. So there are some of the differences between the, the free and the uh, premium account. So I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go to my um, actual, oops, excuse me, my actual account. Okay. And it gives you like your latest activities of what you've been doing. Uh, there's this new diagramming feature, and this even shows you this is new. And I'll come back to that later, because I really actually haven't had a lot of time to play with that yet. But it looks kind of neat. You have all your study sets that you have made in terms of vocabulary. I used to use this a lot with my AP World students, and I use this a lot with my AP US students, psychology students. But this can be used across, I've seen students use this in graduate school. I've seen st st students use this in law school. 
And I've seen students use this in the elementary level. So it really is for all grade levels beyond, even professional exams and so forth. So it's really kind of a, a neat, a neat aspect to it. All right. Um, and here I have all my classes <clears throat> that I create. I can always add a class. Okay. And when I'm on a class, which is kind of nice, I have members and I can share this join link. So this is a link that students would access to actually join my class. So I, this is actually all part of the free version. So students would, you know, be in my class and they would be able to actually, you know, access my material very easily, which is, which is kind of nice. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of a nice thing. You can also organize your vocabulary cards in content by folders. So you can create folders and keep things nice and organized, which is really kind of useful, certainly. Okay. Now, uh, moving on, we have some things here. So we have this plus button. We can add a set uh, to this particular class. So see, I'm in a class. I could add a set to it. I could add members to my class. Uh, I could connect with Google Classroom, which is really nice because I'm a Google Classroom user as well. So I can have my Google Classrooms already tied to this. So which is really great. Have students register for Google Classroom first. Then those rosters will automatically be joined with, with your um, sets here. And you can also share sets to Google Classroom as well. So it's a nice integration. So just for an example, if we, we can we can we can click on that, okay, and I can get started with my class setup, okay, and I can link my account um, to my Google account, which it should already be linked to it. I believe it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, link my account, and I should be good to go. So this is the usual page that comes up. Do you want to link it? I say allow it. Yes. And now it's going to show you all my Google Classroom uh, particular rosters and lists. And then now I can invite those students to join my Quizlet, which is really kind of a nice feature. Okay. And this is your, your uh, notifications report. I could drop this class. I can remove all the members. I can kind of clear things up. That's how you can go through each of your classes, which is really kind of nice. Okay. Let's go back to the main page here of Quizlet. Again, here's your latest activities. Okay, um, what's really nice about Quizlet is that once you create a set, it really becomes part of uh, like this large, I guess, you know, database of content. So you can search for you know content that you already you know might be useful for your particular class or grade or uh, curriculum, and it might already be some great things already out there. Now, I'm a history teacher. Uh, but I'll try to mix it up. Some of my daughters in elementary school, and they were just doing a lot on weather. Okay, and so I could type in weather, and now you can see that there's these terms. This person made 27 terms. They already have a lot of um, images tied to them. So you can kind of go through people who already made some great sets and see if they relate to what you want to use for your own students. You can kind of take some of their stuff which is really kind of nice. So that's a really nice thing about Quizlet is that you can search for um, some great content. Um, I'm curious. Let's just say I'll do LSAT. So <laughs> if you're a law student, uh, let's just see if there's there. And, you know, there's a lot of LSAT terms too. So see how it could be for all grade levels, right, from graduate school to professional training to even elementary, uh, you know, weather uh, investigations. Okay. So kind of kind of, kind of neat. <clears throat> so. Now, how do we start creating sets? How do we start creating uh, content? This is really kind of easy. We can go to create, and I can create a new study set. Okay, so I can we'll just call this uh, test uh, for our Canisius. All right, and now you can actually import a list and terms array from either Word, Excel, or Google Docs. This is really kind of a nice feature. And you could paste in here. So as long as the word is in the first line with a space and you have the definition going across it, it's easy. You can also do it if you're using from a spreadsheet, comma separated, or you have sort of a custom way you want to sort of differentiate your data. And between cards is a new line or a semicolon. So you can import right from a list of terms, uh, which is really useful rather than to copy and paste them in individually. All right. So that's kind of, let me just uh, cancel my import. Okay. Um, you can change your settings is visible to everyone. So maybe you don't want your sets public. I just search, right? Well, you can say it's uh, certain classes, people with a password are just me. 
So you can decide how much you want you want to make your sets public or not. <clears throat> That's up to you. And who can edit your sets? Okay. So this is kind of nice. And there's some other things here you can do. You can add a card. There's some kind of hotkeys you can learn to if you're going to use a power user. These are kind of the hotkeys that you can kind of learn, so you don't have to always keep on clicking. So that's kind of nice. Now, there is this diagram. This is actually really new, where you can tie vocabulary terms to an image. And obviously, you can see how that would be useful. Uh, and I'll show you some examples of ones that have already been made. I'll be honest, I've never made this yet. This is very, very new. Uh, but you can see there's a lot of great possibilities with this. So you can enter a term, OK? And anything you want, you can choose the language. So I'm going to talk about weather. So why don't we talk about the water cycle, OK? Now, um, what's here, you can also add a voice recording with the, with the paid feature, OK? So I don't have that feature, but you can actually record your voice saying water cycle. So your students hear you and see you, and that's a really nice way to make it sort of personable. Now. If you ever have a definition, you can certainly paste it here or type it in. What's really nice is I can go here and go auto define. <clears throat> if I click on auto define, it is going to, um, I gotta choose my language first, I'm sorry, English, which is useful if you're a foreign language teacher. You can sort of switch between both for great vocabulary. Okay, let me uh, get out of that. It's giving me a hard time here. It's not leaving. I thought I chose English. Okay, English, I thought I did. So now if I click on enter definition, uh, to find, it's giving me a list of de definitions that are already, already made. So this is really nice. So I can pick one, one, the continuous movement of water from the ocean, right, back to land, back to the ocean. And for images, I can actually click and add an image. It actually searches for you already for images that deal with the water cycle. All right, so isn't that cool? So I can say that's a really neat one. And now I have this image, and now I have a card, and look how easy that was. I can keep on building my cards, and like another one might be uh, climate is another weather term. Okay, I can do the auto define, and usually the first ones are usually the most popular, which is that's a good definition. And I can take my card and look for climate. <laughs> There's some funny ones there, certainly. There's a map, different climate zones, or I could upload my own image, certainly, right? But again, uploading my own image is going to unfortunately need me to have my own paid account. So again, I think the voice feature and the uploading your own custom images is an important one, and that might be worth the $34 a month or a year, excuse me. Um, I'm not sure if the student progress would be worth it as much. But there's a lot of great, you know, like images here that you can kind of play around with. Um, so, you know, maybe you want to use this one and that's good enough for you. Okay, so there we go. We created our we, we created our first vocabulary set, which is really kind of nice. And now you can there's some options here of what we can do with it. Okay, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to get out of this set. Okay, and I'm going to go back to my sets, so I can show you a set that has a little bit more uh, terms to it. It gives you a little bit better sense of what you can do with. Um, these vocabulary terms. So this is the one that I made a long time ago about the early colonies in uh, 17th century and it has probably 20 or more plus terms. It's giving me the results yet but here is all of my terms. Now I made these a long time ago. I can go back now and edit them and I can you know edit the term, edit the definition all right if I really wanted to okay which is kind of neat and that's fine. So uh, let's talk about up top here. Let's work our way down. It shows you what classes this has been added to. I can always edit the set. I mean, you edit it from this side. It's going to come up here momentarily. And it looks like the other one that we just did, but now I can also add my pictures. So I never had a picture of Pohatan, and I've seen these pictures before, so that might be a good one to use. And this is his brother, and usually they give the same image, but this is a good one, okay? Um, you know, tobacco in Virginia gives you interesting tobacco field, and a, kind of a colonial picture, not exactly. Uh, Pocahontas, there's a lot of you know images of Pocahontas that have been circulated. There's the Disney one. 
So again, we can add images to our things pretty, pretty quickly. Okay. Now I could also, you know, do some other things here as well. Let's get out of here so we can go back to what the set actually looks like. So that was the little pencil. I can also share the set out. So I hit share. I can share it to my Google Classroom. If you use Remind, which is a great another tool to send text messages to your students in a safe, professional manner, it's great. Uh, I could also copy the link and put it on my website or my uh, uh, management system, perhaps. And I'll show you some other tips with that in a moment. I can add a little plus here. I could put it in my folder or add to a class. It gives me information about the set, how well my class is doing, if I have the class progress. And now there's some more. I can copy this set. Maybe I want to make a copy of it and change it and keep a copy. Shows you the latest scores of who took it. I can print it, which is really nice if I want to make a test, which I'll show you that in a little bit. Or maybe a student who has some other issues or, or uh, learning disabilities that needs some help and wants a paper copy. I can combine my sets. I can export it to share with other folks. And this is a great feature. I can embed it, which is really nice, which means that I can set up the way the view will be matching learning or flashcards. And I can put this on a website. I've actually also, I use Schoology a lot with my students. I actually embed my uh, vocabulary cards right on Schoology. So students actually can just go right to Schoology and flip through all the cards, and it's right there for them. So that's a really nice feature, okay? Now, um, there's different <clears throat> games and activities you can do for studying and for, and for playing. Uh, Learn is a neat game. I should say activity, I guess, not exactly a, a game, okay? Where you get started, and it's going to ask you to kind of go as fast as you can, and it's going to ask you, you know, uh, <clears throat> press any key to continue, all right? And you're going to go through and try to master um, some of the vocabulary terms, all right? So this is the governor, right, of Virginia, appointed by Charles Berkeley, all right? But, 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 but the definition actually gave it away. So I, I got it correct. And I can go through the next one, okay? But, 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 and I get, oh, is this right? I don't know. Oh, oh, I didn't get that one right. Okay, so, and it actually will read to you the definitions. This is the computer voice, not your own voice. So if you buy the, the premium features, uh, you can actually have your own voice read the cards to your students, which I think is kind of nice, all right? So the flashcards is always the most popular one, and this is, works great on the apps as well, okay? <clears throat> And here the, you can read it, you can star it, you can flip it, all right? And you can do some really important, great, great things there. You can go through your sets. It tells you how many cards you can play, you can shuffle. So those are kind of neat ways to go through all your vocabulary sets, all right? It's kind of kind of nice. Uh, you can write out the correct answers here. We have to go through all of them. Um, this is more like a spelling. you got to spell them correctly, okay? This is kind of neat. The test is kind of nice, and you can actually print your test out if you really wanted to give an in-class test on paper um, with this. And it actually kind of, uh, your test options, you can kind of set it up. Like, do you want written questions, matching questions, show the images or not? And, you know, then you could actually, you know, print out this as an actual test. Um, and you could print the test and print it as a PDF, and it'll actually give you an, an answer key too. So you're taking the digital content, bring it to more traditional paper format, if you need to give it a paper test or a quiz in class, you can actually do it, which is super useful. All right. The matching is kind of fun. You, you set it up. You got to kind of spread the cards around on the little like, tabletop here, virtual tabletop. And as you kind of, you know, go around, you can kind of try to move them around and see if they match up. Oh, that didn't match. Okay. I got to do this. A series of regulations. I don't know, first, oh, here's House of Burgesses, oh, that kind of, and then once you get the first of them cleared out, you can kind of move them around, and King of England, boom, now you got some other things, you know, Royal Colony is over here, boom, there we go. So, kind of a neat little game, and it times you. Cool with the smart board, works pretty well. It's a good in-class activity as well. Um, the gravity is kind of weird, it's like an asteroid's falling, you could play with that in your own time, not my favorite. And live is neat, but unfortunately, I need to really have a lot of people on at the same time to show you what live is, but it's kind of a live in-class game. And you can watch this video on your own, which really shows you how a live session works with students working in teams and kind of playing against each other. So really kind of a great um, way to have some fun with Quizlet, okay? So those are kind of the ways uh, you can kind of play some of the games on Quizlet, okay? so. Kind of some neat things there. This has kind of been a really big, broad overview, and I hope it's good enough to give, get you started. 
Uh, it's easy to start building your vocabulary cards or even having students build their own vocabulary cards and share them with you as well uh, so they can go both ways. All right, well, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.